Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Pulp Crazy. I'm Jason Aiken. In this week's episode, I will be discussing a novel written by a pulp writer, Time's Last Gift, by Philip Jose Farmer. I tend to call him PJF for short. Time's Last Gift was first published in 1972, but was later republished in 1977 with additional material. I know I covered the Tales of the World Newton Universe collection from Titan Books in a previous video cast, but covering a Philip Jose Farmer story is long overdue. It was PJF's birthday this past Sunday. He was born on January 26th, 1918. He would have been 96 years old. He lived a long life, though. He passed away on February 25th, 2009, at the age of 91. PJF was a big fan of the Pulps. In a recently surfaced interview from a Space 1999 convention, he describes how he begged his dad for money to buy science fiction pulps back in 1929. He was also a big fan of Tarzan and Doc Savage, going as far as to writing fictional biographies about them later in his career, as well as telling new, authorized adventures of each character. Besides being a pulp fan, PJF also wrote for the pulps. His first published story was O'Brien and Abranov in the March 1946 issue of Adventure. He later wrote in science fiction pulps during the 1950s. I haven't read any of his pulp stories yet, but I've read a fair amount of his later fiction that is described by some as his pulp period. This includes stories such as A Feast Unknown, Lord of the Trees, The Mad Goblin, Lord Tiger, The Hadon of Ancient Opar series, and, of course, Time's Last Gift. Time's Last Gift might be my favorite PJF novel. It's a story that I think pulp fans will really enjoy, both for the setting as well as the main character. Time's Last Gift is a time travel novel that chronicles the adventures of a scientific team who travel back in time from 2070 A.D. to 12,000 B.C. in their time vessel, the H.G. Wells One. The time travel mechanics in this book make this an all-or-nothing expedition. Due to some very high-level math involved, they will never be able to journey back to the year 12,000 B.C. again. Also, All opportunities to visit any time before 12,000 B.C. are gone. 12,000 B.C. is as far back as you can go in the year 2070. There isn't a whole lot of discussion on the time travel mechanics in this novel, though. It's not overly technical. I would say it's a science fiction adventure story, more than a hard sci-fi story. Farber himself was very knowledgeable about linguistics, archaeology, and history in general, so he is quite suited to write this. But like I said, this is more adventure than science fiction. Science fiction gets the story started, but it's more of an adventure novel focusing on the scientific team of four. The four explorers and their professions are described as thus. Robert von Billman is the world's foremost linguist. 
a cultural anthropologist, an art specialist, and has the equivalent of a Master of Arts in Chemistry. He's described as 35 years old, 6 foot 2, and well built. Drummond Silverstein is a physicist and astronomer and is well trained in geology. Additionally, he's an expert on musicology and a virtuoso with the violin. He's described as about six foot and thin. Rachel Silverstein has PhDs in genetics and zoology and considerable training in botany and metrology. She and Drummond are married. Rachel is described as short and long-nosed, but pretty. John Gribbardson is the leader of the expedition. He's the medical doctor of the team, a physical anthropologist, an archaeologist, a botanist, and a linguist. He's also described as being built like a Greek god. There is also an air of mystery about him. He is destined to be the favorite character of this story to all fans of classic pulps. He's cut from the pulp hero mold. The team's mission is to spend four years studying the primitive time period and its inhabitants before returning to the future in their time vessel. I started skimming this book while preparing for this episode and found myself almost doing a full-on rereading of it. PJF's writing in this is really engaging. He really does an amazing job here. It's almost like you're the fifth member of the expedition, exploring and experiencing the events right alongside the team. I highly recommend buying the new edition, offered from Titan Books. It's the definitive edition, with new bonus materials prepared by former experts. Christopher Paul Carey contributes an afterword, while Win Scott Eckert and Dennis E. Power provide a timeline of events related to the main character, Gribbardson. This Titan edition also includes the epilogue that Farmer later added, previously only available in later editions of the novel. Between the new bonus features by Carey, Eckert, and Power in the epilogue, the Titan edition is the way to go. It's available in both paperback and ebook at great prices. I should also mention that this book takes place in the Wold Newton universe. Although reading it on its own, you might not realize it, but Farmer does drop some hints here and there. As a matter of fact, it turns out to be the most important book in the Wold Newton series. So if you want to dip your toe into the Wold Newton universe, I suggest starting here. This is probably my favorite PJF book and Wold Newton book. I'll be sure to link to the Amazon page in the show notes, as well as some informative links on Philip Jose Farmer. If you are looking for a fun read in an exotic location featuring a main character who seems like he bursted right out of the pages of a pulp magazine, Give Time's Last Gift a try. I think you will enjoy it. That's it for this week's episode. Pulp Crazy is located at pulpcrazy.com. I'm at pulpcrazy on Twitter. And facebook.com slash pulpcrazy. The video cast is located at youtube.com slash pulpcast. You can also email me at pulpcrazy at gmail.com.